not to that bore, another one. Do you know him? The brother of Nils uh, I don't, uh, don't, I don't think. I'm not sure. Uh, he was a football player. Nils <laughs> Bortur. <laughs> and uh, a mathematician. And accordingly with uh, Hardy, that Hardy, he is, he, 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 he's the author of a uh, um, very famous uh, sentence. I will read it. Perhaps you already have uh, heard this, uh, this sentence that says, all analysts spend half of their time hunting through the literature for inequalities uh, which they want to use uh, but cannot prove. Uh, this uh, is reported, has been reported by Hardy, and it seems it's a sentence, sentence by this uh, football player. Uh, so, uh, this course, uh, uh, mini course, is essentially about uh, uh, inequalities. Uh, I will write in a very, very general uh, way, I will look for uh, something that I will call uh, with abuse of uh, notation, linear, those are not linear of course in any, in any, in any sense. Uh, well P is a real exponent greater or equal but essentially I will uh, mainly be focused on uh, uh, the case P greater than 2 and by the one, phi and psi are given uh, weights. More precisely, uh, uh, phi and psi uh, will be often distance uh, powers of the distance of uh, from a point, say x, if this is in the x, on our n, and those are integrals on our n from a given subspace uh, uh, of codimension H, so uh, K. Uh, uh, okay, a given subspace, I don't want to. Those, uh, I'll call those uh, inequalities linear because uh, here and here you have the same exponents and then I will also be involved with, roughly speaking, inequalities of this form that uh, I will call semi-linear, this is really an abuse of notation, when Q is greater than P. So, uh, um, in particular, I, I will be uh, focused on uh, those pro these problems. The first one, how to get inequalities like this, on the li or like this, in particular, how to get inequalities like uh, this, for this I will, of course, uh, the, this uh, uh, subject is too wide, uh, I will just give a few examples and few ide ideas that can help a bore uh, to, find, uh, to find inequalities like that. And uh, then I will be focused uh, on uh, the problem of existence of extremals for those inequalities, in particular uh, for uh, those Inequality. What does it mean extremal? Uh, the problem of finding a best function u such that here you have equality with the best possible constant c, or a positive constant, hopefully. hopefully. And then, uh, in case uh, the extremal exists, uh, we'll uh, try uh, to, to uh, say something about uh, their qualitative properties, say, uh, for instance, if uh, uh, phi and psi are radially symmetric, but actually I will not be uh, involved with such a general, uh, general setting, uh, I will uh, uh, try to understand when and if uh, u is uh, uh, radially symmetric. So, uh, essentially, how to get inequalities, how to prove the existence of extremals, 
and uh, how to study uh, uh, the qualitative properties of the uh, extremos. Uh, and uh, uh, well, one can wonder why one, one uh, should uh, uh, be so involved uh, with uh, uh, the problem of looking for, uh, uh, for uh, um, inequalities like that. Okay, here might be in our N or in bounded domains. Since the first inequality I will talk about, and I wish to apologize for this is the Poincaré or Steklov uh, inequality. So, uh, I mean, there are many, many things, many tools that we perfectly know that are quite familiar to us, and, uh, but uh, sometimes it may happen that we, we miss the, uh, the, the, the importance, the, the deep, deep importance of some uh, uh, familiar tools. So, since uh, I, in this mini course I will focus on integral equalities, inequalities, I will start with the simplest and the, for perhaps the most uh, familiar one. Uh, uh, assume you are involved. Uh, uh, so, no, first, 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 uh, the, the, um, uh, something I, I, I think that, that all of you are, uh, some, I think, also, Sasha, yes, mm, uh, all of you are is uh, 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 quite familiar with the general facts about uh, LP spaces, distributional derivatives, uh, Sobolev spaces, facts like uh, uh, embedding uh, theorems, continuous and compact embedding theorems. Actually, uh, as a corollary of some uh, of the inequalities I will prove, uh, we will uh, reobtain the standard uh, um, embedding results. And, uh, well, uh, in all uh, um, in all this mini course, Omega will always denote it bounded uh, and the smooth domain are in. And n is greater or equal than 1, even if I will not uh, s uh, say it explicitly. Uh, so I will also deal with the spaces, uh, say, W1P of omega and W1P0 of omega. Uh, I will use the notation H1 instead of W12. So I will use this notation with P up, not down. And some notation like that. Okay. I, I will need the, perhaps uh, the notion of distribution solution to this Poisson equation and the notion of uh, weak solution. Uh, to this uh, equation, and in particular, if I deal with the Dirichlet problem, uh, perhaps uh, say f is continuous up to the boundary, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, <coughs> it is convenient to work uh, uh, for a weak solution, to look for a weak solution which is a function in H10 omega such that gradient u, gradient uh, eta is, uh, 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 is equal to f times eta for any test function eta. So how to look uh, for a solution of this uh, problem and how to characterize it? Uh, a solution to this problem exists uh, and it is given, is, it is characterized by, variationally, uh, by as a, um, actually the unique uh, infimum of this energy functional on the space H10 of omega. Okay, we already know, we'll, we started it in, in the, in the, uh, first uh, courses that uh, there exists 
the suitable, this nice space H10 omega. For the moment, uh, let us forget it, that we already know, and uh, we just observe uh, this, uh, okay, uh, this can be done uh, also in first, for first year students, Italian students in engineering, that uh, uh, at least uh, formally this energy is for your suit uh, that runs in some space, uh, hmm? uh, this, uh, this energy is somehow related to this uh, uh, problem. So forget the fact, the fact that we know that this problem has a unique solution, uh, forget about the fact that this space has been already defined, try to find a solution to this problem. Remark that uh, if you define this energy, whatever x is, you have that, just because this is quadratic, it's very easily, that, uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the derivative This uh, directional derivative uh, at zero is zero. Then uh, uh, gradient, then uh, uh, for, say for any eta, like here, then uh, u uh, satisfies uh, this uh, this uh, 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 equality, uh, and so u is a weak solution in this sense to the uh, pro to the equation at least. So what we have to do, and what we know very well, is the problem, in essence, is to find uh, uh, the space x, x. And uh, which are the uh, needed requirements to the space x. O of course, if you want to solve that problem with the Riclet boundary conditions, in some sense it must be that u is next implies u is equal to zero on the boundary in some sense, because we also wanted that the, the Dirichlet boundary condition is satisfied. <coughs> then uh, we want, uh, of course, that the space E, uh, the, the functional E, is well defined on, uh, uh, for uh, any function u in x, and then since we already know the answer, we also want that uh, this functional is bounded from below. I'm waiting that Sasha sleeps, then I will start the course, don't worry. <laughs> And of course, uh, we want to be sure that uh, the infimum of E is achieved and uh, that uh, Fermat's, -like theor uh, Fermat's theorem hold, that gives that all those partial derivatives are, uh, are, uh, mm, are, uh, exist in the minimum and they, they are zero all those partial derivatives. So all those things follows by from, indeed, from the, what I, I will always call Poincaré, that it's not uh, uh, totally uh, correct, it's uh, Friedrich's inequality proved by Eustachloff for the one-dimensional case in uh, 19, uh, in 1897. No, for, for 3D also. Pardon? For, in 3D also. In, ah, in 3D, in 3D. But I apologize, I will call it Poincaré. It's not correct, I, but uh, they, they lear, they, uh, I learned in this way that says that if omega is bounded, then there exists a constant c greater than zero such that, uh, say v, because u is the solution, u is the minimum, uh, 
and then almost immediately you have uh, you can define the right space x which is h10 of omega why because you can define a space nice space in which this is a norm uh, actually an hilbertian norm and uh, uh, um, also this first condition uh, immediately enters in the, uh, the definition of the space X uh, in a natural way, immediately. So you define this norm. And you define X as the, comple uh, the completion, the closure of uh, smooth functions uh, in uh, L, say L2 of omega with respect to this norm. So you have that uh, functions the V in X uh, vanish at the boundary in some, some sense, that of course has to be studied. Uh, we have that E is well defined for sure on this space, it is bounded from below because this is uh, of order 2, this is of order 1, you can use cauchy schwarz inequality and then uh, of course you have to work a little bit uh, uh, I mean um, but very few uh, with this one, this is a norm so it is weakly lower semi-continuous and so on and you give a complete answer to all those things uh, so I apologize for the, those triviality but I just want to to emphasize the fact that uh, an inequality gives uh, you all the tools you need. Gives you a space, first of all. Gives you a space on which the energy you can define immediately is well defined and that has very nice properties. So this was just to emphasize the importance of having the right inequalities. Well, and now I will prove this tackle of uh, inequality. Uh, more or less two or three minutes here. Mm -hmm. There are many, many ways to prove uh, this inequality. You already saw the proof, point-wise proof. Actually, uh, from this proof, uh, uh, one can uh, also infer that it is not necessarily that uh, uh, omega is bounded, but uh, it, we only need that, uh, that uh, omega, uh, say, this holds for any b. <coughs> it's not to assume that omega is bounded in one direction. Okay, uh, this is the proof uh, for sure, a uh, very standard proof, take any V like that. So we assume that omega is contained uh, in, uh, uh, so that the closure of omega is contained in the open ear interval. <coughs> so for sure, V of uh, uh, this, any of this, those points is zero. So uh, V of, uh, so I will call it S and this is uh, uh, Y, say. This is first year calculus or less. Either inequality or without uh, <laughs> Then you get uh, this one, and if you, if you square it, then you can uh, uh, you can uh, put the squared inside.
you can put here b times uh, something, perhaps b minus b minus a. Uh, so now you can, uh, uh, of course, so this is more or equal than b minus a, uh, the integral between a and b, gradient of v s y squared ds. This does, number does not depend on s. So if you integrate this on uh, uh, Rn, that means that you integrate, in, integrate between a and b and, and uh, on uh, Rn minus 1, you really get something like that. So this starts from a pointwise proof. All the inequalities I will talk about uh, have, uh, of course, also a pointwise proof. <coughs> but I will be... Uh, actually, this does not work so nicely. My God. I already used all them. I will uh, present as, as examples a number of uh, inequalities and uh, at my test. Hmm? It's not. Ah. <laughs> no. He was a football player, but I, I go in fitness. Uh. <coughs> sure. Okay. It's the room for strong mathematicians. I am. Please tell in uh, Italy also this. Uh. It would be nice. Okay, uh, now I uh, don't know how to... This is a, a, a factor of test. I prefer uh, uh, integral proofs. Uh, to that uh, can... Uh, can that uh, allows me to understand as well the, 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 the spa function spaces I need. Uh, those are integral proofs or divergence proof. Huh? Uh, for instance, of course, there are many, many uh, ways to prove it. Uh, for this Poincaré-Steklov inequality, the proof needs uh, uh, omega bounded in all the directions, but it doesn't matter. I notice that uh, that the Laplacian of uh, the norm of x squared, x is in our n, is uh, to n. Since I can always assume that uh, zero is not in omega, because, I mean, this problem is invariant with respect to translations, um, we have a dryer, do you have... Uh, if I write here the uh, and I take a function v as before, uh, this is one over two n, the integral of uh, the Laplacian of uh, this uh, smooth function. V v. Both of those two functions are, uh, are um, uh, surely smooth on omega, and uh, v is zero on the boundary of omega. Square, v squared. Squared, surely. Uh, so this is one. Hmm? Uh, 
this is uh, one by one minus uh, uh, two, two over n perhaps. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, smaller or equal, say. Should be correct. Uh, one divided by n, maybe. Uh, Alexander Lynch, ah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sleep. Okay, uh, say, but I can also assume that uh, omega is contained, omega is bounded, so it con is contained in some ball of radius r. So this is smaller or equal than 2r over n, to put away this. And here I can use the Cauchy Schwarz inequality. And so I can uh, simplify this with this and get this Tickloff inequality with uh, some constant, uh, small or equal, perhaps uh, no, 2, 2, 2 r over n squared gradient of v squared. Uh, which is, of course, uh, uh, worse than the proof bef before, because uh, uh, here I need uh, that omega is bounded in any direction. But, but uh, please, uh, I'm not. Uh, this is not a course about uh, some inequality. This is a course about inequalities. How to get them? Suggestions, ideas to how to get them. <coughs> But uh, notice that this is a nice constant when n is great with respect to that one for n dimension, great dimensions. So uh, in the inequalities, I will, uh, the inequalities I will prove, uh, uh, except for the uh, Sobolev inequality, I will never use pointwise uh, arguments. I would prefer to use, uh, in particular for the linear inequalities, uh, some divergence method. Now our third proof of the Steklov. Poincaré inequality. Now, now it was not uh, really uh, now, uh, but uh, let's let us move to page uh, let us move move to page uh, nine. Actually, this uh, three is nothing but a generalization of inequality. Uh, of the of the argument in two, but I will uh, state this uh, as a general lemma, which was essentially due to Allegretto. Uh, Piben Brink. They proved uh, some lemma independently. Uh, actually, in this form, I should say, you can find it in some paper with Muhammad Mustafa Fall and myself in the appendix of a paper in Journal of Inequalities and Applications, something like that. Uh, because I will state it in a general uh, framework, framework. So, so assume that omega uh, in our n is an open uh, domain. Uh, not uh, necessarily, of course, not necessarily bounded, uh, not necessarily smooth. Uh, uh, and n is greater or equal than one. 
uh, assume that uh, A is in L infinity log of omega <coughs> and uh, it's a weight. Uh, almost everywhere. Or greater or equal than zero and non-trivial, for instance. Let's see. So assume that phi in L1 log of omega is a distributional super solution to this problem. What does it mean? It means that phi minus Laplacian eta is greater or equal than the integral a of x phi eta for any eta in C infinity with compact support in omega. That makes a sense as phi is in L1 log, a is in L infinity log, so this is uh, in L1 log for sure, this has is in L infinity with compact support, and it's the same for this. Sign for eta. Uh, sorry. No negative. Because this is just an inequality. The conclusion is that uh, uh, gradient, let me take this same, gradient of V squared is greater or equal than the gradient of A of X V squared for any V in C infinity with compact support in omega. <coughs> Actually, this uh, second, uh, the, this is uh, second uh, 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 proof here uh, is contained in this lemma by taking phi uh, equal to the norm of x. Uh, uh, well, not not uh, not really, not really. Uh, forget because uh, phi uh, must uh, be uh, non-negative. Um, and non-trivial, sorry. <coughs> so uh, uh, that, phi, that phi is not, uh, not nice because... Uh, 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 phi, uh, phi should be r, r squared minus uh, x squared. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or some uh, r minus x squared to, uh, with some constant r, I mean. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, hmm. uh, The constant is equal to one. I mean. No, it can be. I mean, you don't know. Uh, you you don't know if it is uh, sharp. I mean, in the Allegretto uh, Perpendicular, some of one. The, there are many variations of the Allegretto Perpendicular lemma. This is an Allegretto Perpendicular lemma, actually. Uh, the, some of them de, uh, tells you that uh, some inequality exists if and only if there exists a, a distribution, a solution of the equation, no negative. Uh, the constant can be... Uh, it can, I mean, it can, it can be better than one, but if the one is... Yeah, of course. One is... It I mean, you don't need an additional C in the last line. Oh, no, it, it can be... No, 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 no. Uh, uh, it can be uh, better than one. It can be better than one, but one is always okay. One is okay. Of course, you can, if a phi satisfies that, then phi satisfies also that, and you obtain a worst thing. But I mean, uh, one is good. Uh, uh, you can improve it, perhaps. You don't know. So let me prove this allegretto, uh, this lemma. Uh, Let me prove this lemma. Uh, um, in a s with an additional assumption. Uh, that is that uh, phi is smooth and positive. Say. Uh, 
actually what you do in general to, to prove the, this theorem with phi in L1 log, you just uh, approximate your phi and your uh, coefficients in a suitable way, but in, a sen in essence this is uh, the idea and the proof is really very simple uh, because you just test this inequality with, uh, so you take some v, non-trivial, and in this case you test inequality with phi minus 1 v squared because I mean extended by zero the, uh, you don't have never you never have troubles with this uh, phi <coughs> and so you test it and integrate on the uh, right hand side that becomes the left hand side you have this one we are talking about uh, as both functions in this case you integrate by part and uh, this is pointwise equal just a fact of computations pointwise equal to something Fantastic. I will come back in, from St. Petersburg in a perfect form, perfect thickness. I make it, uh, <laughs> kilometers and kilometers by walking. You know, I live in a small town. I, I never walk. And uh, I walk, walk, you know, by kilometers and then... Uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Oh my God. Uh, I forgot this. Uh, fortunately, I forgot that. <laughs> uh, so... I don't want to bore nobody. I see that uh, Sasha is not sleeping. That's uh, words meet me. This is pointwise equal to this one. Try to to try to check. This is the Picon identity, mm. and uh, uh, this is negative. So this is pointwise smaller or equal than gradient of v squared and trivially this is smaller or equal than gradient of v squared. In essence this is the proof you can see it's uh, so simple that's the reason why I prefer I, I know I prefer I of course uh, uh, why when I look at integral, uh, uh, integral inequalities first of all I try to to, to use uh, solutions to equations or s super solutions to some equations and so on. Okay, the first exercise is, the, is the, the, that what I was saying before, try to take something which is similar to that one, uh, some phi is equal to some constant minus modulus of x squared to get uh, the third proof uh, of uh, the stack of inequality via this uh, lemma. Uh, but we can also use this lemma to find, uh, to present one uh, first uh, for this mini course uh, proof of the hard inequality in our n. Of course, here I don't use the fact that omega is bounded. In this lemma, omega is not bounded. So, first proof of one of the hard inequality. We shall see many different proofs of the of many actually hard inequalities, uh, as this one. We use the lemma with. Uh, Omega is equal to this domain and uh, we take as phi 
actually a smooth function uh, I don't use I, I use this uh, setting not uh, that one uh, the so general in particular phi is a constant is simply a constant when n is equal to 2 this is a smooth positive function on the domain omega and uh, <coughs> no negative and uh, so in, in general this I will use uh, several times so uh, the Laplacian of x to some power alpha is equal to alpha n minus 2 plus alpha uh, so I will use it many many times plus, yes, uh, uh, minus, let me say minus, n minus 2 over 2, uh, we have uh, times uh, the norm of x to 2 minus n over 2 minus 2. Uh, so this is equal, I can change sign here, n minus 2 over 2 squared this is x minus 2 and this is phi so indeed the Laplacian of phi is equal to this one I can also say of course I'm nothing wrong if I write this fact This holds pointwise in uh, my doma domain Rn minus 0. Pointwise, and hence it also holds uh, uh, in the distributional sense, of course, because phi is a smooth function. And so from the lemma, I immediately get that gradient of phi squared is greater or equal than n minus 2 over 2 squared. V squared that for any V with compact support in Rn minus 0 of course uh, this is uh, uh, what I, one could call uh, hard inequality there are many of uh, hard inequality indeed Hardy proved the, the, uh, his first uh, the, the very uh, hard inequality was for functions uh, uh, was this inequality with n equal 1 of course if n equal 1 then r minus 0 is not connected so in essence for n equals 1 you are interested in this inequality uh, for functions with support in a half line so this is the true original hard inequality I don't need absolute value or no modulus. When n is equal to 2, this is not very interesting, of course. Uh, when n is greater or equal than 3, indeed, uh, uh, one can use uh, 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 some density results uh, to show that uh, uh, this uh, I will skip uh, this part, uh, this inequality if n is greater or equal than 3 holds for any v with compact support. Of course, for n uh, equal to 1 and 2, to say, to, just to write this integral, you have to assume that uh, v vanishes at the origin, because if n is equal to 1 and 2, uh, then this weight is not locally integrable. So to 
to give a meaning to this integral, you have to ask that V vanishes at x equals 0. But as soon as n is greater or equal than 3, then this weight x minus 2 is locally integrable and it is not really difficult to, sh to use density result uh, to show, I mean, uh, what does it mean? It means that any function with compact support here is the sequence, is the limit of a sequence uh, with compact support in r n minus 0 limit in this norm. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, b b b b what I, uh, 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 just to conclude this, why, why, okay, we will meet hard inequalities, uh, several hard inequalities, several times, but at the second exercise, I, I also give some exercise, then I, I will ask to the people in the, audit, in the class. to show me the, uh, the exercises, okay? And uh, uh, use this hard inequality to prove this thick of inequality. As immediate, okay? Take any exponent <coughs> a in R and then use the uh, divergence theorem to prove uh, this equality. No. This is uh, wrong. This is a mistake, this is an exercise. I hope it's correct. <laughs> so, that's another homework. No, no, that's another homework. Try if it is correct. Of course, uh, we must be careful because for sure this weight, uh, in particular this one, cannot be locally integrable for sure. Uh, for uh, uh, sure, uh, you have troubles with the, with the, some th th things like that. Uh, 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 so, in essence, you can see that uh, uh, this is x n minus two over two plus a half gradient of u plus something else and uh, this cancels with this and, and this becomes x to the power a. So this is the divergence theorem. Of course uh, this is uh, greater or equal than zero and uh, hence uh, as a corollary you get uh, this uh, uh, weighted hard uh, with a weight also here And again, uh, if uh, uh, this is uh, locally integrable, that means that a is greater than 2 minus n, then this holds for any u with compact support in Rn. Uh, Roberta, uh, uh, what is the difference between c uh, infinity c and c infinity 0? The difference is that I was using c infinity c and then after the last four preprints in archive, I started to write uh, c infinity 0. I see. c infinity c is equal to c, so notation. c infinity with compact support is c infinity with a 0. Uh, <coughs> another proof 
of these inequalities. Uh, uh, p -p 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 okay, in Cable Chain, a similar way, by not uh, exactly with the lemma I wrote before, by taking phi is equal to. Look at the uh, equation solved by this positive function, and then try to try some trick uh, to prove uh, this uh, this uh, uh, one. Okay, another proof of this equation will be given. Is this one? Is uh, with the mdom flow and transform to any such a map U, you associate uh, this is in, uh, in uh, a bijective uh, function, a function G. So U is uh, from uh, Rn minus 0, and G is uh, from uh, a cylinder. n minus 1 dimen n, 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 n dimensional cylinder. Uh, the uh, I write u in polar coordinates, so r is the radius and sigma runs in uh, the unit sphere, uh, and you define uh, the relation between g and r is r to this power <coughs> g of the absolute value, this is a tradition. So uh, if u is a, a, a smooth function with compact support here, then g is a smooth function with compact support here. And... Uh, Excuse me, should r be uh, less than 1? Uh, no, no. No, uh, log uh, r, uh, if log r is uh, positive and negative, we obtain. I, I put, I put, so I put zero in uh, in plus infinity and plus infinity in minus infinity, something like that. But uh, why absolute value of? Uh, log um, no, so sorry, uh, minus minus log minus log yeah. yeah. Minus log r is just for because okay. of the derivative is y over r. So mm -hmm. in the, and then, 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 uh, what, what you ca can compute, I will write here. Uh, well, uh, the fact is that uh, this difference here, you can make very trivial computations. Oh, it seems to me this is a, 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 an exercise in an exercise, as far as I remember. Uh, this is gradient of g squared. So it's trivially positive. Okay, but I would like to stop here with uh, we will see more examples and uh, more tools to get inequalities uh, in uh, the next uh, the lectures. As I said uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, I will be involved in how to get uh, inequalities. Here we have seen some of examples and then uh, I will uh, like to discuss the existence of uh, extremals when they exist. And uh, of course one can use several tools uh, uh, because uh, I, I will uh, find inequalities in this form. Okay, because the space um, x is embedded into the space y and then I will look for extremals that is, uh, we, I will try to, uh, to find uh, functions uh, u in, uh, uh, in x uh, such that uh, they achieve this infimum. Hmm? 
uh, for instance, because I want to compute the best constant here. And so I want to uh, solve uh, problems uh, like that, variational problems like that. Of course, a minimizing sequence always exists, but the minimizing sequence, in particular for the inequalities I am interested in, might have a, a wild behavior. Mm, for instance, uh, they can be made by nice minimizing sequence by something that uh, blows. Uh, something that blows up uh, here and there. So, <coughs> generally speaking, uh, uh, it is convenient, it can be convenient to select among all minimizing sequences uh, some minimizing sequence that uh, is, does not have a wild behavior, that behaves uh, nicely. Okay? Uh, well, I should say, starting from now, that in the, I mean, uh, half of the 80s, Pierre Louis Lyon we are indeed involved in the study of minimizing sequences for X and Y in several uh, relations, several kinds of spaces X and Y. Uh, uh, his, he, his concentration compactness uh, lemmatas, two lemmatas, uh, are uh, in some sense uh, uh, very useful to study the behavior of, of all minimizing sequences. And in um, all the existence theorem, I will uh, state and prove, of course, the, concent the two concentration compactness lemmatas by Pierre Lyon can be applied. Do you know the two con uh, concentration compactness lemmata? Okay. Of course, uh, this is uh, uh, a remarkable result. I mean, uh, it's of uh, extreme, uh, extreme importance, uh, uh, really great re uh, results. Uh, of uh, great generality, and for this fact, if you uh, use uh, a tool which is really general to handle a concrete problem, uh, then uh, perhaps you meet uh, um, some uh, uh, hard com com uh, computations and uh, calculus that are not uh, needed uh, indeed. Uh, in the existence uh, results of this kind, I will, I will prove, uh, I, instead I select a nice minimizing sequence. What does it mean? It means uh, I select minimizing sequences that are also palace male sequences. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me say something. <coughs> so, uh, what I, I am going to talk about uh, the Ekelands variational. Let me, let me state a problem which is more general than this one. Uh, so, assume that, uh, for instance, or more, more general or less general, depends. Assume that X uh, is uh, a na nice space. For instance, uh, not this one, but uh, a Banach space. Uh, assume that you have an energy, uh, Whatever that this means, uh, very nice energy, fresh differentiable energy in the space E, X, and assume you know that E is bounded from below on X. So you have two facts. The first one that comes from the completeness of, uh, of the real number is that always exists a minimizing sequence sequences. This is a fact. What is the index? U A? H. Okay. Take well, the index U H. This is fact. The second fact is Fermat's theorem. Fermat's was Fermat was Fermat was not a mathematician, as you know, at all. Uh, and uh, that says that if you have find a minimum 
actually, it's not to, to, to if, if, if you already know that E is a Gato differentiable in this minimum, but in any case, uh, it means you have that this linear functional is zero. Okay, but in general, uh, the derivative of uh, the energy along any minimizing sequence uh, might be very far from zero. Uh, of course, the examples I can uh, I can draw uh, uh, are, um, surely are not very interesting because I can only write a, a draw examples in which uh, x uh, is equal to r. Ah, uh, so uh, this is for okay. <coughs> Take, for instance, a function like uh, this from R to R. So in uh, one half of the time, you reach the level one, say. So you, your slope is two. And then for uh, uh, one four, in one four time, you reach uh, the level uh, one half. The slope is two and so on. You, you may construct uh, all the examples you want. Then you can also, of course, make uh, this function uh, smooth. And of course, this function is uh, the infimum is zero. It is achieved by a number, uh, many, many points, but uh, uh, you can always construct uh, a sequence uh, a minimizing, minimizing sequence like that <coughs> so the Fermat's theorem in some sense does not apply to minimizing sequences the Ekeland's variational principle essentially say that uh, the, uh, uh, an epsilon Fermat's theorem holds uh, for spatial minimizing sequences. And it is uh, really a general uh, theorem. I will uh, state somewhere. I, this is a very nice uh, tool for erase, but not a nice tool for uh, write. Uh, not always nice to erase. So, <coughs> actually, Ekeland's variational principle does not need the differentiability assumption or not, nothing about that. This I holds really in a very general setting. And there are actually many variants of that. So <coughs> uh, X is a complete metal space E from max to the extended linear, linear uh, line is uh, uh, lower semi-continuous And proper uh, 
it is not identically equal to plus infinity and it is bounded from below. That is that infimum of the functional E on X is greater than minus infinity. Okay. The theorem, uh, the conclusion, so very general assumptions, is that for any pair of positive numbers and uh, for any u in x uh, such that, uh, I mean, u epsilon uh, uh, achieves uh, the minimum of uh, e. <coughs> Uh, there exists uh, some u tilde. I will first uh, say a uh, u tilde that is close to u, uh, that has less energy, and such that, in some sense, the slope of the, no, not in some sense, the slope of the E energy on the u tilde is small. These are the three facts. So you can lower indeed the energy. The distance between u and u tilde is smaller than the delta you have chosen before. And This is crucial This inequality holds, the strict inequality holds for any v in the space different from u tilde this, uh, uh, of course, clear. Th th this means that uh, if u is approaching the infimum, then also u tilde is approaching infimum. Uh, this means that uh, the uh, you can you can choose uh, u tilde along a sequence uh, uh, u h in such a way that the distance goes to zero, uh, and this will mean for say Fréchet differentiable functions that the derivative of e in u tilde is zero, uh, goes to zero. For instance, um, uh, mm. uh, is the one-sided uh, inequality? Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you can't put models here. You don't need. Okay. You don't need, because the opposite one, in, in some sense, comes from the fact that you are minimizing. Uh, the, uh, once one more remark about uh, this uh, uh, number three. Excuse me, really uh, you can write uh, instead of epsilon m minus u plus u, yeah? Pardon? We can write in the inequality you instead of epsilon <laughs> m minus e of u. No, 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 no. I mean, the, I mean, the fact is, it's quite strange that this epsilon is uh, can be uh, uh, m minus. Oh, I can understand. Uh, yes, it can be. But uh, to use this uh, for our purposes, you know, after we can, we will take. Uh, okay, we will take this as to be the difference between uh, uh, e of u and m essentially. And delta goes going to zero in such a way that this goes to zero. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just for the, for the convenience of the application, this strange... Uh, I mean, epsilon does not... Uh, seems that does not... Uh, it enters here, actually. Okay, uh, remark on this uh, three. We are minimizing... We are studying this variational problem, in essence. You... Uh, is going to 
will be, go will be going to, uh, to uh, minimizing this. Perhaps if epsilon goes to zero. Uh, about this U tilde solves, and it is the unique solution of this minimization problem. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, in the right-hand side, it cannot be a good thing. No, no. I mean, this is a, otherwise it would be very easy, too easy to prove. A posteriori, when you, uh, I mean, a posteriori, ah. U tilde is the only solution of this one. Nice. So, what does it mean? Uh, write this as Forget about the uh, uh, forget about the fact that uh, uh, this phi depends on your children. The third conclusion tells you that if you are interested in this minimization problem, you do not don't know if uh, this infimum is achieved. Uh, you can find a suitable perturbation of the energy such that uh, this minimization problem has a unique solution. This is the meaning. Of course, uh, you solve this because uh, uh, th this infimum is equal to a e of u tilde, and this is exactly a immediate con consequence of the uh, third conclusion. So let us prove it. I don't know if I will uh, have uh, time enough. So the proof is by induction. Of course, one can understand that it's by induction. We will construct a, a sequence um in h that converges to u tilde that satisfies all those things so the maybe first maybe not m why not uh, m is infinite mm, maybe not m <laughs> Mm -hmm. H I can't. Uh, N. N is the dimension. Terrible. No, M is the dimension. N is still. No, ni, ni. Okay, okay. Oof. I wrote it only here. <laughs> okay, M. Otherwise, I M. Please. I apologize. E, I is the infimum, M is the index, integer number. Okay, the first one. Uh, is equal to U, the function U. So we have a fixed epsilon, delta U. We fix them. <coughs> uh, every time I have uh, some UM, I have uh, a set uh, sigma M. So let us let me f define the first set. I have to follow those because otherwise, boom, boom, boom. so e of u one, which is equal to e of u. So is the set of functions some, such that from. Uh, Below, the, the, you have control of, on the slope, on the dependence of, 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 of uh, the energy. This set uh, is not empty, surely, because U1 belongs to sigma 1. So this uh, set is not empty. 
and th this is the first function in the sequence, this is the, fir the first uh, set. Uh, of course, then uh, to, to, uh, de per de for the definition by induction, I have to assume that uh, UM is defined, but uh, let me say who is U2. U2 will be any uh, point in sigma 1 such that E of U2 is smaller or equal than this largest uh, in, in femum largest than i plus uh, some error so this is i want two because this is number two this would be the second element and uh, then of course uh, i have a second set which is this one and which is not empty per because you two belongs to this set. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow, uh, no, on Wednesday I will not uh, have this nice pink shirt. But the camera, I always forget the camera. So uh, of course uh, once you have the sign, the, uh, Uh, if you have the mth uh, element in the sequence, you can define uh, define first sigma m as the set of functions v in x such that e of u m minus e of v is greater or equal than epsilon over delta the distance of um from v and uh, then we define the uh, next element in the sequence that is um plus one is in sigma m which is not empty and it uh, almost achieves the infimum of e on sigma M. And you have find uh, the m, th m plus one element in the sequence. So you have a sequence. Let me check. Okay. Uh, just to notice that. Uh, uh, since uh, um belongs to sigma m trivially, then uh, this is small or equal to e um plus one over m plus one, which is smaller than something by the by the setting we are. Now we make a list uh, some comments on this. The first comment is that for any m, the set sigma m is closed. I always make confusion between closed and closed. Closed, not open. The contrary of open. Closed. Oh. <coughs> this is uh, an immediate consequence of uh, uh, the fact that. Uh, the, the distance, the, the function E is lower semi-continuous and the function, distance function, is continuous. <laughs> so, uh, in, in, in one line you can prove that the set sigma is uh, the set sigma is closed. <coughs> I have to use all the blackboard. 
The second claim says something says that uh, the, the sets uh, sigma m uh, are nets. Uh, are like, uh, how do you call your, your dolls? Matryoshka. This is for any m greater or equal than 1. In the so uh, proof, take v in sigma m plus 1, what does it mean? It means that something. It means that uh, uh, epsilon over delta, the distance of u m plus 1 from v, is smaller or equal than the distance I should give uh, references on, on uh, uh, the, where, where, uh, uh, where I t about uh, where I did I find the proof. This proof uh, I cannot. Uh, more or less is is contained in in Struve's uh, book, uh, but it's uh, it's somehow simplified with respect uh, to Struve's book. I mean, it's standard. I can, you can find it in many. Uh, oops. Uh, okay. Um, <coughs> so I can use the, and I have to prove that uh, v belongs to this set. That means that I have to estimate its distance from u m. So I try to estimate the distance of u m from v, and the first step is the. Triangle inequality Of course I will use this uh, uh, remark uh, this remark from uh, for this uh, and here what I can use uh, I can use the fact that um uh, belongs to sigma, uh, uh, I use the fact that something <coughs> u m plus one belongs to sigma m. Is it correct? Yes. So <coughs> it means that the disk holds when v is equal to u m plus 1. And here use this one. Nice. So this tells you that uh, this is equal to e of u m minus e of v. For and uh, this means that uh, this is smaller than this, which is the definition of sigma m. <coughs> so this is the second claim. The third one I should the first. Uh, I should uh, cancel this, otherwise... Ah. <coughs> so those sets are become, becoming smaller and smaller and in the third step, we estimate uh, their size. Hmm? Uh, why? Because sigma m, I claim, is contained in the ball of uh, center u m, and uh, radius delta over epsilon m. 
this is for any m greater or equal than 2. This is my third claim. And uh, actually, because to, in order to simplify notations, I will prove that uh, sigma uh, uh, of m plus 1 is contained in the ball of center u m plus 1 for any m greater or equal than 1, that's the same. So to prove this, I have to take any function v, any function, any point v in sigma m plus 1. Recall that this is contained in sigma m by step 2. That is uh, <coughs> e of v, uh, in particular, surely is greater or equal than the infimum on sigma m of the functional e. Just because it is contained there, I only use this. I only use this, it seems. So, uh, I have to prove that V belongs to this ball, that is, I have to estimate the distance between V and this point. Actually, I will estimate delta over epsilon and that one, and that one. Delta over epsilon, the distance of V from U M plus 1. I have to show it's smaller than this one. <coughs> now, I know that, uh, mm, I know that uh, the V belongs to sigma M plus 1 uh, that have some definition. So this is smaller or equal then e u m plus 1 minus e of v. This is just by the definition of the set sigma m plus 1. But now I have the definition of u m plus 1, which is this one. Okay. Mm, sorry. Can you read it? But there must be epsilon over the Pardon? In the beginning of this slide, epsilon over delta. Delta, uh, sorry, uh, you're right. Uh, you're right. Epsilon over delta. Okay. So this is uh, smaller or equal than the infimum, this which is written here. You can see E of UM is smaller or equal than this infimum plus 1 over M plus 1. I'm so sorry. I, I, I This one, just by the, the, the definition, sigma m. But uh, this E of V, since V belongs to here, is uh, this one is greater or equal of this infimum. So with a minus sign is minus infimum on sigma m of the functional E. This because of the E of V. Okay, nice. So you have proved that uh, epsilon over delta, some distance, uh, is smaller or equal than 1 plus m1 over m plus 1. So you have proved that the distance from of v from u m plus 1 is smaller or equal than this number. That is, you have proved that v belongs to this ball. Okay. 
It looks like a miracle, isn't it? A very, I mean, this is one of the most elegant proofs I've ever seen in my life. It's so elementary. <coughs> So actually there is, I uh, don't remember the name now, uh, those are closed sects, uh, n nested, uh, how do you say, huh? and the, the diameter goes to zero. This in fact is a theorem, a general theorem in topology that tells you that there exists a point And of course, it is unique. So this intersection of closed sets, number uh, countable intersection of closed sets, is a not empty closed set. And more precisely, it consists of one single point. This is a general theorem, but uh, I mean, you can prove it uh, by hand. Um, of course, um, uh, uh, let, uh, let us, no, 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 let, this is point 0.5, this is our goal, this is our goal, you, you could, uh, some, some theorem I don't remember, in a complete matrix space, you have a complete matrix space, you have a sequence, blah, 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 this follows. I don't remember the name of this theorem. So we will prove essentially that theorem. Do, do you get the theorem, Michael? Banner contraction, C. <laughs> no, contraction, no. C, contraction di banner, che cioè falle chiuse. Theorem delle, ah, delle contrazioni, ma è quando è punto fisso quello? No, vabbè, ok. No, il nome era più complicato, se no me lo sarei, me lo sarei ricordato. Sorry for this discussion in Italian. Ok, uh, let us first keep, uh, uh, in any case, that general theorem. Uh, of course, at some point uh, we have, uh, since we need that X is uh, complete, uh, is a Cauchy sequence. Uh, what does it mean? It means, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, take indexes. H M larger, so in particular they are larger than two. And uh, <coughs> assume, for instance, just to fix ideas, uh, okay, if they are tri equal, it's, it's really trivial. Large M is large. Uh, so if so U, U H uh, is in sigma H, which is contained in sigma M, uh, which is contained uh, by some step two, perhaps. And by step three, this is contained in the ball of uh, center U M and uh, radius delta over epsilon M. M is large. So we, this, we already proved all those facts, and you have that the distance of UH, UM, is smaller than delta over epsilon M. Uh, in general, for any H, M greater or equal than 2, uh, you have Uh, this inequality that tells you immediately, since uh, delta and epsilon are fixed, uh, that uh, this is a Cauchy sequence. And then we can prove step five. By step four, there exists u tilde uh, in x such that the, the, the sequence we have uh, defined converges to u tilde. Uh, now, <coughs> since uh, um belongs to, uh, uh, so, 
so, so take any any take any index h uh, h greater or equal than one take m greater or equal than h then u m belongs to sigma m which is contained in sigma h which is closed set this is step two this is step one and since uh, this converges to u tilde and since those sets this set is closed it means that also the limit belongs to this And this holds for any H that is U tilde belongs to the intersection of all uh, the sets of sigma. And of course, uh, it is the only point in this intersection. So we have th that uh, the, this uh, singleton is contained in the intersection h of m must the same of those closed sets and actually the equality holds no, no, there are no exist points different from u tilde that belongs to this intersection this is easy to prove because those sets are, are the diameter of those sets are is going to zero easy to prove well <coughs> Uh, uh, now we have constructed uh, this uh, E tilde and uh, I need more blackboard to, uh, to prove that E tilde satisfies the, th the three, it's, uh, the proof is almost finished uh, once you have constructed the, this, uh, this U tilde. We just need the, def the definition of uh, E uh, ba, 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 ba. you don't need more space because of time oh no no it's 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 over I mean uh, yeah, should I stop here mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, bread mm, it depends Aren't you sleeping comfortably? Huh? Okay, I know I know, just uh, constructed the utility that, that belongs to all those M. And I started the proof from the third one. I, I, I check that uh, uh, U tilde is the solution of this minimization problem. So assume that V is in X and that this does not hold. Okay, then again I guess the triangle inequality uh, enters this u tilde belongs to sigma m so epsilon over delta I want in essence I want to show that uh, this is a zero that v is equal to u tilde I use the triangle inequality for any m No. Uh, U tilde. No, 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 no. Sorry, uh, too hurry. No, no. Sorry. I I estimate the distance between U M and V. I put inside U tilde. 
sorry. Here I use this one, here I use the, the fact that u tilde belongs to sigma m. The definition. So this first distance is more or equal than e of u m minus e of u tilde. And uh, uh, here I use this one. <coughs> Uh, plus again something can cancel so this distance for any m the distance this distance is more or equal than eps, uh, the uh, this the a, uh, e of u m minus e of u this means that v is in sigma m for any m. This means that V is U tilde. And hence this here the quality holds. If V is not U tilde, then this strict inequality must hold. Is it clear? Uh, I have finished. Huh? Four lines here. Now we prove the first claim. Uh, I know that the first, by definition, the first element was u, and I know that u tilde in particular belongs to sigma 1. So what does it mean? It means that the... Uh, uh, it means something. I will write it uh, because I don't have here the... Write down the definition in a slightly different way of sigma 1 uh, re by recalling that u1 was indeed u. By definition, this is non-negative. Uh, so I if possibly, you win in energy. And... Uh, Again, we use u tilde to prove the, the second, the last one. Uh, uh, epsilon over delta, the distance of u from u tilde, that uh, was uh, what uh, we want to estimate. Uh, u tilde belongs to this, so we rewrite the same thing in a different way. This was from the beginning smaller or equal than the infimum of the energy E plus epsilon. And since uh, u tilde uh, is in X, this is greater or equal than the infimum of E. So this is smaller or equal than E plus epsilon minus E. That gives that the distance of u from u tilde is smaller or equal. Oh, well, smaller or equal than delta. Doesn't matter. Okay? That's all. That's all, folks. I did it. Uh,